So my name is Lilia McEnany and I am an assistant curator at the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture Laboratory of Anthropology. And as you all know, we are here today to chat with Abraham Pena. So a few things before we get started. Um, to begin, I would like to briefly acknowledge the place where this conversation is happening, even though we are not at the museum today and are in a virtual space in Ogopoge within the Tewa world. As a non-native person living in so-called Santa Fe, I am a guest in the ancestral homelands of the Tewa people, and I wish to acknowledge all of the indigenous people, Pueblo and Navajo Apache and so many others, past, present, and future, who walk on these lands and steward this place. And for those of you who do not know, the Goodman Aspiring Artist Fellowship was established at MIAC by Dr. and Mrs. Connie Goodman, who are members, friends, and wonderful supporters of the museum. The fellowship is designed to provide financial assistance to up and coming native artists who, are, who show promise and are eager to move forward in the next level of their development. Goodman fellowships have often opened doors to um, other amazing opportunities for recipients, such as artist residencies at the School for Advanced Research, or the Santa Fe Art Institute, invitations to art markets, or um, gallery and museum exhibitions. So this program with Abraham is the fourth in our new lecture series to highlight our Goodman Fellows. The program kicked off um, with Taryn Lascon, continued with Cree Laurence, and last month we hosted Adrian Standing Elk Penacus. Recordings of each of these events are available on our YouTube channel, so um, be sure to check those out if you miss them. And these programs will continue on a monthly basis throughout the year and leading into 2022, generally on the fourth Wednesday of every month at 10. So please keep an eye out um, for my ex newsletter and social media for future dates. So with that, I will hand it over to Abraham. Hello everybody, I'm Abraham Pena. I'm 25 years old and I'm from Zuni Pueblo. Um, well, what really inspired me to start making jewelry was I was <clears throat> kind of, in a tough spot, um, wasn't, you know, really the brightest kid growing up, always got into trouble, stressing my parents out, stressing my whole family out, you know, and I uh, kind of took it upon myself that I had to separate myself in order to show that I was, you know, trying to make changes in my life and become a better person every day, become a better version, someone to inspire rather than someone you know, it's going to be looked at as, oh, he's not going to be anything. He's going to be worthless. And, you know, I was told all that stuff growing up because of how I used to be. So I uh, started this job at the circus carnival and I would travel all over in New Mexico, um, Colorado, Texas, um, pretty much to these rodeos and to all the pueblos. And uh, we would, um, I mean, it was hard labor. <laughs> so pretty much we would just uh, do whatever was told and travel, pack up, and we had to unpack the same day. We would get there no matter what time it was, one in the morning, three in the morning, we had to unload everything. But it was a rough job, rough lifestyle that I didn't want to live. So I um, left that job. I came back. My parents noticed that you know I was willing to make the changes. I came back looking for work. I worked two jobs. I uh, really took the time to commit myself and discipline myself into a routine where I would, um, you know, take on the task consistently with no problem. And I got to that point where I was very dependable with all the bosses. They took advantage of me and I was getting paid minimum wage for all the work I was doing and never got a promotion. i fell in a deep hole because I was so worn out. I was tired. I didn't know what to do with my life. My mom spoke with me and encouraged me to do jewelry. I refused, but I slept on it the next day. I said, why not? So uh, after the first day, um, I mean, first hour or so, I, <laughs> I already melted everything and I didn't have a uh, a lot of supplies to work with after that so my mom said well you kind of got to use what you can pound everything out make it flat again and see if you can reuse it cut it out and you know make swirls out of the shapes that you're cutting or I don't know she'd just give me little you know bits of advice that what she would do if she were to mess up or make a mistake and um, she helped me along the way with that but we didn't really have all the money so she couldn't 
teach me hands-on because she was working on her projects that she had to get done by certain deadlines. So I would hover around her and sometimes I would get her upset because she, you know, she just needed her space, but I just was really committed to learning. But of course I had to respect her. I would take a step back and then eventually work all day, all night on the same thing. And yeah, I mean, I just kind of committed myself after maybe a week or so, I taught myself how to solder and not perfectly, but you know, it was good enough to where I can kind of get the process going and I was still melting my stuff, but at the same time, I was getting more coordinated with my hands and how to hold the tools in both and put the flame, the amount of pressure, heat. So it really um, grew on me and I was able to just create whatever I wanted piece by piece. I took my first piece to um, Wright's Indian Art Gallery and they bought it. So that's really who started me out, Wright's Indian Art. They bought my first piece, which was a pin pendant. It was a we made out of a disc plate, and then I pretty much just soldered triangles all around different colors and put a couple of them on um, little podiums, like to step them up. And they loved it, and they bought it for what I asked for. When they bought it, I was so excited. I went straight to Thunderbird Supply, <laughs> um, bought some more silver. I got my Monson silver. And from then on, I was just super happy. I kept it going, kept creating, um, tried other galleries, um, got told no, no. Um, so right then and there, I kind of knew like, wow, this ain't gonna be easy. And it kind of, I was discouraged for a minute because I thought, you know, the stuff I was creating was different and I thought everybody would give me a chance, an opportunity but it wasn't like that i was still you know learning i didn't have the proper techniques down um, my polishing wasn't all great i mean you know just still learning but i was so committed that i needed to make sales i wanted to make this my life um, it truly was a passion i found myself i really connected with back with my tradition back home in zuni i really just wanted to um you know, reconnect with my roots and where I come from and who I am inside. And I just grew up in the city most of my life and that's all I knew, trouble, because I grew up in bad neighborhood. And I mean, you know, I made my own choices, which were bad. Nobody forced me to do anything. I sort of just do it to survive. <laughs> but um. I'm very thankful that I found jewelry and was given the opportunity from my mom and my parents, just very encouraging me and everybody along the way. Um, Alvin Vandiver, um, he's Navajo silversmith. He was my main mentor. He, we shared the same workspace and writes Indian art for a few months. And he really ha helped me excel my craft. Um, he would critique my work. I would finish a piece, hand it over to him and, he wouldn't say much he would just try this i would go back and try it and but the way he would tell me um to do things or try it is he would have me figure it out he would never gave me the answer and i would always be confused like what did he mean and <laughs> but uh he would always do that and i would always figure it out and he would be impressed it's like wow you know you're really good at what you do and you got to, you know, get out there more. You got to start um, selling your stuff and get out of the galleries. You stop wholesaling because that's not worth it. You're worth more than that. So I kind of took his word and went off on my own. Um, and after that, just started this full time, took a risk and eventually met a lot of people with the online sales. and especially when COVID hit, because that's when I started making my website. And I'm very thankful for that. But mainly all in all, I got started because I was in a low spot in my life. I didn't know what I was doing. My mom encouraged me and I just kept it going. Everybody along the way, family, friends. Uh, yeah, I don't know. My first Indian market was amazing. <laughs> and when you're doing jewelry and amazing lady named Geraldine from Queens, New York, 
uh, blessed me as when I was barely setting up. <laughs> and that's what really opened my eyes and said, wow, I can do this. And I just kept going, 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 and going. But um, other than that, I really don't uh, know what to speak about, um, about how I got started unless, you know, questions really. I don't know. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, thank you for sharing all of that with us. Um, I can't believe you learned how to solder in one week. That is unbelievable. Because I, <clears throat> so my parents, they were in the process of moving back home to Zuni. So when I was learning jewelry, I probably only had about a month really to learn and teach myself because I didn't want to move back to Zuni with my parents. <laughs> I was so used to living in the city, I thought I could make it out here. And uh, so when they moved back home to Zuni, I had an empty apartment. <clears throat> um, I literally, like my bed was on the floor, just my dirty clothes. <laughs> and um, I just, I was working in the empty apartment with this tiny acetylene tank. It's a blue one you can buy at a Home Depot or Lowe's. And the thing was the flame, <clears throat> it didn't stay the same uh, pressure or amount of heat. You had to keep turning the knob to keep it the same pressure. So, you know, I really uh, taught myself a lot of different things, just working with different tools and how the more expensive stuff works a lot better. But, you know, it took time to get there, but I was in an empty apartment, just creating on one soldering board, one pliers one tweezers one of everything really um, not even a hammer i was using a little rock with like a flat end of my stamp like this and using a rock from the outside to make my stuff flat and it was really a struggle you know and thankful where i was and well all that time i was in there creating I went to Wright's and they bought a couple of pieces. And then I took the rail runner to Keshi in Santa Fe and she bought a few of my first pieces. And I was really happy about that. And after that, I was able to stay in um, a motel and I found a job and was able to get back on my feet. And yeah, from then on, I was working at Restaurant Antiquity in Old Town and the owner there, Steve Salazar, really blessed me with a job there too. And he's an amazing man, amazing workers who've been there for 15 plus years and I was happy to <clears throat> have been a part of that family that the um addition that they needed you know that missing piece but um after that I met a lot of people there and they told me your stuff's amazing go so um there's actually a couple in there from Buffalo New York they bought a wristwatch from me they ordered it from me a special order and they said well since we got this from you we're going to help you start out so they bought that for me and they said if we're here again in two weeks because they were on vacation and you're still here they're like we're going to be disappointed because they're like you can really make a lot happen in two weeks so i took their advice i was like all right i'm going to take the risk so i left my job put in my two-week notice and after that, I just put in a lot of work nonstop. And I tried all the galleries in Santa Fe. And eventually, yeah, one of them supported me. She, of course, would, but she wasn't buying it at the time. But I was just trying other galleries. And yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it sounds like you've been surrounded by a lot of wonderful people, one of which I think is on the call right now. She just left a comment um, saying, I worked with your mom at La Mesa. This is Chris Ortega, um, first grade teacher. I'd like to say I'm so proud of your accomplishments. Oh, wow. I remember her. <laughs> uh, she, <clears throat> my first grade teacher was Mr. Ed. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Ed Meister, and she was, I think, the next door teacher. I'm not sure, but I do remember her. I remember everybody, you know. I remember the tough times I put everybody through. <laughs> I'm sure they all remember. I was a little troublemaker, but, <laughs> but my mom threw a lot. And she got me out of a lot of trouble because she was a teacher. But <laughs> it was um, very, yeah, I'm just very happy to see that everybody was uh is tuning in and happy to see how far I've come. And so we have a few more questions that have come in. Um, 
The first one is from Rob, who is asking how you get ideas from your for your pieces. Ideas, the ideas sort of just come. Um, more what inspires me is just architecture. Um, a lot of people ask if other jewelry inspires me, other artists. Um, yeah, other artists inspire me. A few of them is uh, such as like Jean Billy, um, Alvin Vandiver, um, Tim Yazi. Um, you know, those are really like the only ones who I have good connection with. Kali e. Eli, you know, great fetish, fetish sculptor. Um, now he's getting into jewelry, so I'm looking forward to see what he's gonna make. But yeah, these are amazing artists that I look up to because they're hard workers. I see them posting new pieces every day and that's what inspires me. Like, wow, I need to start stepping it up, creating more, uh, start posting a lot more content. You know, they're on top of it and they give me that push, you know, so. But other than that, like, um, architecture inspires me uh the landscaping the you know forests hikes um pretty much anything i uh <laughs> that's kind of hard because like i'm saying it's a uh, i just create as i go um like if i'm working on a certain piece like this bracelet um if, if i were to i'm finished with it i just need to polish it but if i were to if I were gonna add more to it, like a stone or something, the whole process can change. I can add probably four more stones on it or it'll be a larger bracelet. Um, I really don't know the process continuously changes if I'm working on a piece more than one day, but if I'm working on a piece consistently throughout the day, um, it'll come out. I, I really don't know, but what inspires the designs is just, I guess my creativity creative mind <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that that's weird <laughs> but no that definitely makes sense I guess I just have a lot going on in my head that I can't think properly or I, I, I'm just thinking too quick that the designs come and as I'm working I'm working so fast and I'm stamping quick and then I'm cutting out designs quickly like it just everything just flows together that's incredible. So. Um, it's so interesting to hear how um, you think your brain just moves too quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, right. there's times, um, like, especially late at night, I'm like, I'll have ideas running through my mind, and I'll have to rush over to my workshop just to get it out, you know, it has to get out. Otherwise, that design's going to move on, I'm going to grow from it. And I'm, my mind's consistently growing every day. I'm, you know, I'm outgrowing myself every day just like I'm outgrowing you know the clothes the shoes like we were when we were babies friendships relationships that's pretty much how I live my life I'm just outgrowing myself because I mean we make mistakes every day we learn new things every day so you know we try to all keep a balance in our life because if we we're to you know lean one way or the other um, it's not always going to be there's always a roller coaster somewhere, you know, so, but anyways, like, uh, I just sort of, yeah, just have that mindset. I want to outgrow myself every day and designs consistently come and go. So I got to get them out there while I can. So I'm, every day I'm working <laughs> every day. I have to make something different every day. I have to let out these emotions because it's, really what I base my work off of, my everyday emotions as an artist. Some days I don't feel like getting up and working, but I got to push myself. I have all of you out there supporting me. I can't let any of you down. I can't let myself down for that matter. I've gotten this far and I'm trying to go further and further and further. And I amaze myself with how far I've come within the four years I've been um, doing the jewelry. And I've been doing this full time now for two years. So it's really amazing to see the progress and the steps and sometimes I don't appreciate it and I have to look back and absorb it because sometimes it hits me last minute. I barely started filling the fellowship award at market. <laughs> so I, I got real nervous before this and I didn't know what I was gonna say. I didn't know what I was gonna speak about, but you know, I'm starting to loosen up a bit now and it's just, I'm really thankful for everybody and all of you.
because it's really amazing to see the progress, the consistency, the discipline that I'm um, trying to, you know, keep going, the creative juices, everything. I just want to inspire everybody of all ages, you know, to kind of challenge themselves to do something they love every day consistently, you know, whether it's for 30 minutes, 10 minutes, I mean, even just a minute, you know, uh, like, like just do something you love every day and see how happy it makes you, see how it changes your life. Because this is definitely life changing. When I took on this craft, it was, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I thought it was going to be easy. I mean, I was burning the carpet, putting holes in carpet. <laughs> I was burning myself. I was, man, I was driving my parents crazy too with um, learning because they wanted to sleep. Abe, when are you going to stop? We want to sleep. And so, you know, the whole process is I always look back and appreciate like, wow, I came out of my mom's uh, bedroom <laughs> from, she had her workspace in her bedroom and I came out from that. So it was, so now I have my own little workspace and I'm surrounded by amazing artists and people. So <laughs> we all inspire each other, but it's amazing. Thank you all. Like it's, this is really great. Thank you for sharing that. That was wonderfully, um, wonderfully inspiring. Um, there are so many questions that I want to ask you to build up on that. Um, I guess you mentioned um, that your the pin pendant was your first piece that you ever made, and you're talking a lot about how your work has changed over time. Um, so I guess I'm wondering what um, you're focusing on right now in your work. Uh, mainly right now, I'm focusing on um, just trying to <laughs> keep a consistent inventory. Uh, I'm trying to work on being more patient because usually the way I've been working is I'm making pieces and, you know, as soon as I finish them, I'm taking videos or photos, I'm sending them out to everybody, you know, and everybody's <laughs> kind of like, oh, well, that's mine. And then some people get to me late and be like, oh my God. And they're like, this is a hamster wheel, Abraham. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I got to start um, learning how just to um, create pieces and be more patient selling them, you know, give everybody the opportunity rather than having everybody grab and grab first come first serve. But really more or less, I'm just focusing on building up my inventory and working on new designs such as different techniques. <clears throat> the Goodman Fellowship, the Goodmans are supplying me with a lapidary unit and a slicer. So I'm looking forward to receiving that sometime soon, maybe within a week or a couple of weeks. So I'll be able to do more inlay work. Um, I really, what I've been doing, how my inlay work has been doing, I've been going over my parents and using their slicer and just slicing my stones, bringing it back here, using my granite wheel on my motor, shaping them, forming, piecing them together. And yeah, but, more or less, I'm focusing on the smaller stuff first, and then I'm working on the larger stuff on the side. Like I have this right here. This is a belt buckle. I have a ruler right here somewhere. Here it is. Um, six inches, pretty big. So like I'm getting into the larger stuff. Um, the stones were set in here, but I had to pop them out. I had to pop them out because uh, I used a soft solder and I didn't realize it. And this part broke off. So I had to pop these stones out. And I got to start all over. So a lot of people don't understand the process sometimes either, how long it can take. Um, this, <clears throat> um, you know, I started this the night before uh, Saturday night. So <laughs> I wanted to just showcase something really, you know, huge and, you know, like catch everybody's eye. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to finish it and polish it, but I got pretty close, but this broke off. So I had to now start all over. And this is a perfect example of how design can change. So since I'm taking everything out, um, 
I see something else. So I'm gonna design all around this. I'm gonna, this is how you see it now. This is not how it's gonna look anymore. <laughs> so, but you guys, so take a good look at it. I'll be posting it in a few days, but this ain't what it's gonna look like no more. I'm so and, uh, excited to see. <laughs> but yeah, uh, stuff like that. I do have a mini sculpture that I did and I displayed during market time, but uh, I'm gonna be entering it um, when I do the herd show. So I'm gonna be applying for the herd. The application's coming out on the 30th and the deadline is September 18th, I believe. So when the time comes and it's time to submit pieces, <clears throat> I'm going to enter my little mini sculpture, my first one that I ever did, and I'm so happy about it. I mean, I'm excited, so I hope I'm building up excitement for all of you, making all of you curious, jumping out to your seats. But um, yeah, when you'll be able to see it is when they post it um, to jury. And But yeah, I'm going to keep that a surprise for now, because I'm sure a lot of people already seen it over the weekend. and. I just kind of want to keep it on the low right now. <laughs> but um, I hope all of you understand. But these are um, some new designs I've been working on. So this is a white buffalo. And I really love this piece because it's, um, you know, it has that balance of white, black, like a yin yang. And that's sort of why I designed it as a journey. And I added some 14 carat all, all around. And I made the journey, you know, to represent, you know, like your journey through life. And what my uh, brother Julius and my mom say is, as you journey through life, the moon enlightens your path. But in this case, I have it as the sun. Because every morning, you know, do a prayer when the sun comes up and, you know, sprinkle some cornmeal for blessing, you know, pray for everybody, make sure everybody's taken care of. And so this is a yeah new design that I've been working on. That's stunning. The band is really spectacular as well. And this drop right here is the moon. And actually, this was going to be a pendant. <laughs> it was going to be a small pendant. Uh, this is a ring I designed my mom on her birthday. I asked if I could show. Wow. What are the stones? Uh, this is a purple spiny oyster shell. And then this is a Sonoran gold turquoise. And then this is a Chinese turquoise. That's incredible. I'm trying to get like, show you all the detail. Not a lot of people get to see all the detail in photo. And this is, yeah, beautiful piece of Chinese turquoise. <clears throat> we have a question in the chat um, if there will be photos or demonstrations of Abraham's work. So I think what he just showed us is even better than a photo. Um, but Abraham, do you want to tell people where they can see more of your work? Um, yeah, usually uh, most of my work is on my Instagram page. Uh, you can follow um, me at A-Y-E-X-B-R-O-9-5. Or you can follow my new page. I just created my business page. Um, I'm still <laughs> working on it and trying to post more on it. But uh, it's Abraham Pena Jewelry. So I'm working on um separate business pages now just because my personal account is getting too full and uh, it's getting so stressful so <clears throat> i've been trying to manage everything and organize everything as much as i can but i'm so busy and uh 
it's hard to get everything together because I'm doing everything, you know, all by myself. I'm, I'm taking the photos. So actually like, yeah, I'm my photographer, I'm the, I'm the jeweler. Um, you know, I have, every piece has a name, every piece has a meaning. Um, every piece is one of a kind. So I do my best to, you know, speak about how I was feeling as I was creating it. Um, you know, a moment, a memory, uh, yeah, however I was feeling as I was creating the piece. And um, they named themselves. So the the moment I named them is after I'm finished with the whole process, you know, taking the photos and cleaning them up because these are my children. So I got to take the time, you know, to deal with them properly, you know, raise them properly, clean them up and take good care of them. And it's more or less like I just want to show you know my passion this is my passion i want to show people how much i care about my craft and all of you i you know i care so deeply about all of you i consider all of you family so it's really amazing to see how far we've gone with uh, our journey together but yeah it's uh more or less i'm just very thankful for all of you and um happy to be a part but my jewelry, yeah, is displayed on my business pages. You can find me on Facebook also. So my website is abrahampaintedjewelry.com. But I've been having a lot of issues with it lately. Uh, I'm, you know, a lot of, I don't know if it's high capacity, but, you know, my server's low and doesn't let me post um, photos or, I don't know, it, it, it's giving me a rough time right now, so I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to connect with the art spam team and figure something out so I can, you know, um, start posting a lot more on there. Because I've been trying to post, so what you see on there is already sold. And so I've been trying to post more and more consistently on my website, more than my social media, but I will be posting on my business pages a lot more. I'm going to um, put a hold on my personal account. So if you're following my personal accounts at A-Y-E-X-B-R-O-9-5 on Instagram, you're not gonna see as much as you're gonna see on the Abraham Pena Jewelry. But I also have Abraham Pena Jewelry hashtag to where you can just click on it and it'll take you straight to all my work. Great, thank you for that. Um, so Chris has a few more questions here. Um, about, we've touched on this a little bit, um, but she is wondering if there are any particular elements in nature that drive you to create. Yeah, um, I don't know. I sort of just find nature is very inspiring. Nature I look at the most because I love going on um, morning jogs, like in the trails, the foothills. Um, I haven't been lately just because, man, market weekend gets crazy. You know, you got to work all day, all night, trying to prepare certain things you know got to get ideas out there but at the same time you got to make pieces on the side to sell so you can get more materials to make what you really want to display and i mean it's a it's a lot it's a lot of back and forth and then plus you gotta you know think about your bills and whew, man it that's where all, everything then you gotta post so yeah it's a lot of work but um really nature is my most inspiring i really love this And uh, this right here, um, I really love this because I made a couple of wedding bands for um, <clears throat> Ken and Paul. They're, they're amazing. And uh, I met them at an Indian market and I guess right away when they bought a piece from me, they knew that I was gonna be the man to you know make their wedding bands. And I never knew that and it was such a blessing to hear that. But I created them, their, I created their vision, what they seen. And I pretty much seen something like this. Um, I was in constant uh, contact with them. Um, it was like a, you know, a rush order. Their big day was coming up within a few weeks. So I was constantly in contact with them creating. I created probably about four or five different samples until I finished the final product. So uh, let me see if I can show you on my phone of what I did and how it really, um, their drawings inspired nature. But this is what he did.
this is what he was sending me. Little sketch. That's the first sample. And then that's, I had two other samples, but this is like the fourth sample. And then these are the final. Those are spectacular. Oh my gosh. So you can see where, you know, I was drawn to. And then this is another piece I made that's inspired by nature or the sea, you know, this is inspired by the sea. <laughs> so a uh, red spiny oyster shell, purple spiny oyster. And then the band I created to represent like a coral reef. So yeah, these are, I'm looking like towards more organic designs also like this also, you know, viney and texture and, so a lot of logs, a lot of uh, the ground even, um, I use a lot of the silver dust that I collect in my scraps. Like this is my scrap, it's real dirty, don't judge me, that's just me. So all that silver dust you see, I, I filter all this, I clean it all out and then I save it and I have a, I have a little glass container, but I have this to refill too. So I have a lot. I, I collect this stuff. <laughs> oh, but yeah, other than that, uh, nature is probably my most inspiring architecture also. Um, a lot of stuff inspires me. I mean, there's designs I see along the highways, uh, steps even. Um, there's a the cathedral out in Santa Fe, the steps going up to the door. Um, I made a cathedral step bracelet. <laughs> so it was um <clears throat> that was fun i mean i i see just different stuff <clears> the <throat> sidewalks how they're designed um paintings um i try to i don't know when i first started i would always say i want to be the picasso of jewelry you know picasso of silversmithing so that's really what hit my designs this is one of my first pieces you can tell i didn't know how to polish at all But this is stuff I used to make when I first started. I real thin, see thin band. <laughs> but this is a ring, like, and it has a chain dangling. I, I was going for that steampunk style. It's adjustable. That's beautiful. It's so interesting to see how your work has changed. Yeah. <laughs> No, nobody nobody wanted stuff like this at all oh uh, no that's their loss okay <laughs> <laughs> old town <laughs> old town albuquerque would always uh, push me away and <laughs> tell me horrible things like that so don't regret that i would always uh, i always would laugh because i used to work i yeah i used to work at this fine dining restaurant in old town restaurant antiquity and I was, yeah, I worked there in Old Town. I would always laugh because I would tell my boss, like, man, I never thought I would be working in Old Town because I, I dislike it so much. Got, <laughs> you know, got discouraged. They made me tear up a few times, you know. <laughs> but, you know, it's the process. You learn, you grow, and, you know, I needed that because it really helped push myself, like, well, what do people like, you know? what They like the simple stuff. They like the, but... I wanted to make, you know, different. So I just kept at it. I didn't care what anybody said and eventually paved my way through along with um, the help with and advice with several artists, my parents. And I think everybody along the way that's, you know, been there for me. And yeah, I got to give a shout out to, you know, all the artists who've given me advice along the way, you know, that talked to me, gotten the chance to get to know me and, you know, like Tim Yazi and Gene Billy, his lady Elaine, and Alvin Vandiver, of course, and, you know, my brother Julius Eustace, and Sean Shakia, and Robert uh, Mac Eustace, my cousin. Um, he took me in. We lived together.
together and you know he taught me a lot Cheryl Arviso um so yeah I mean these are artists that you know helped me along the way we would talk we would work together in the garage and <laughs> we yeah or we just talk but these are artists that I keep in touch with um and yeah they they're great people the Duke Poos so yeah it's um hard if I didn't mention you I'm sorry <laughs> there's just too many to think of but I appreciate all of you who all the artists who've helped me along the way we've had a question come in from Angela um asking if you still have the cathedral bracelet no that was I made that like two years ago and uh it's this the day that I was inspired was the day I set out at the portal. I didn't make any sales at all, but I went back because I always go to cathedral. That's the first place I go to when I'm in Santa Fe after um, when I'm waiting to draw a number for portal. First place I go and I saw the step and I was like, wow, I'm gonna go back home and make that. And yeah, I didn't sell anything that day. I went back home. I made that bracelet. I go back the next day and it sold. So and it was amazing. So, I mean, I never created another one because, you know, I don't want to take away from the one of a kind. And uh, I mean, now, you know, I mean, you might see a lot of them out there now. <laughs> so who knows? Hopefully I've inspired, you know, something. But yeah, I don't know. I just look at certain things along the way. I look at um, especially mud, like, you know, the cracked earth when it rains, especially out in the Pueblos how the sun starts to dry all the mud up and you start to see all the cracks. I like to um, sort of imitate and uh, make my designs look alive and real. So like the roses, you know, I always do my best to um, create, you know, the rose and bring, have it look like it's blossoming. But uh, yeah, I also, I don't think I have anything else. So. I'd love to talk a little bit more about your creative process and maybe a little bit about your studio and where and how you work. So I'll show you guys my table. It's a mess here in a minute, but I mean, I guess that's just me. I'm, you know, I'm an artist, but yeah, I, I work through a mess, you know, hurricane and every time I clean my table, it's a disaster right away, but I guess that's just how I like to work. I'm not sure but I hope all of you don't judge me. <laughs> I don't, I don't even have a lot of tools either. So I, you know, work with what I have and um, it's amazing to see what I can create, but my creative process, I sort of just, uh, Gene Billy and I were talking about this over the market. We're like, yeah, we both create spontaneously. Uh, we don't draw, we don't sketch, uh, we don't do none of that. So that's how I work. I don't draw, I don't sketch out anything. If I were to do that, um, I wouldn't even create that piece I drew. <laughs> I would create something way different. Maybe I'll like start out with that design, but I would incorporate other designs and mush them together and make something, you know, different. But um, yeah, my creative process, I just work as I go. Um, sometimes what inspires me too is just other designs that I've done in the past like how I could have done them differently. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I wanna make another bracelet like this, but this way, and sometimes I never get to it. But then when I'm creating something, you know, and I wanna incorporate designs I've done in the past and bring them back with new designs I'm doing, I'll mush them together. And so I don't know, I sort of just reflect, I guess, more or less, I reflect with my cre creative process, how I grew and, um, yeah, I look at my old work sometimes too from the memories and I'm like, wow, I need to do something like that. And yeah, old stuff that I've made inspires me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I really, the creative process just comes uh, naturally to me, I assume, because <laughs> it's hard to explain it. Um, I just come in, I work. I don't know the professional terms of anything. Um, I'm not, I don't consider myself a professional with the jewelry because I just know how to do it, how I do it. And 
Um, even though I'm taught a certain way, I'm not going to do it the way I was taught. <laughs> and that's what's gotten me in trouble with a few mentors also, um, not doing it their way. Um, but more or less, yeah, I just like to learn things as I go. And I don't know. Yeah, like I said, um, I was just always inspired by Picasso, Dali, uh, these painters, you know, Einstein, um, just who had a different vision. And I just always wanted to um, show the world that, you know, stuff can be done differently. And rather than um, having stuff, you know, look the same. And, you know, that's part of the reason why I didn't want to pick up designs from, you know, my mom or my family. I wanted to go off on my own. And yeah, it was a huge risk trying to find out what I would make and how I would make it. And I guess that's what really helped me grow. But I've always doodled. I've always um, done like wrote a lot in journals and would write in class and would sketch stuff and like graffiti you know <laughs> but uh i don't really know the i just like to try different things that no one would think of like i'll grab a rock outside and i'll scratch my silver up just to texture it like <laughs> you know or a stick like those are just examples you know of what i'm trying to say in my creative process I really don't know how to answer that question. No, or... that was a great answer. <laughs> but I would <laughs> have to disagree with the fact that you don't think you're a professional artist. Um, <laughs> I think everybody on this call would definitely disagree with that. Um, just because you do things differently, you are still a spectacular professional artist, I think. It's just because, like, you know, I don't know the professional terms. I'll be speaking with artists and they'll be like, uh, you need a, a nail. Uh, I'm like, huh? I'm like, and they're like heat it up and i'm like, oh yeah heat it up yeah <laughs> i'm like i'll heat it up <laughs> but you know they have their terms and i'm like what and they're like dang they're like you need to start learning i'm like i just know how to do it you know yeah but you don't need it I'm like, maybe one day <laughs> but i just you know like to do things how i do it and um just keep growing from it um teaching myself and if it's sawing my finger and bleeding or having a piece of silver jump on me because, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll learn from it. You know, I've, that's most, mostly how I've, how I've learned, um, just going through the trial and error over and over. And I mean, I used to have a hard time making bezels. Bezels were tough for me, but now I can, you know, make them really quick. And I used to make five, six bezels at a time just to get a perfect one. <laughs> so the, it's just it's amazing to see how much I've grown just doing stuff over and over and over and over again at all day every day and but yeah it's uh it's just funny to look back yeah um absolutely so kind of building off of that and as we're um wrapping yeah. up here I am wondering if you could share any dream projects that you have in mind or any professional goals that you have as you're looking towards the future of your career. I don't know. I don't really uh, look ahead at what I'm going to do. I really don't even know what I'm going to make today. Um, like I started this out as a bracelet, but who knows? I might chop it up. And I really don't know. Um, so yeah, I don't look ahead. It's the creative process just comes, you know, if I'm inspired and it comes to me like, like this, this little mini sculpture I did, I was creating a bracelet and like a stone, it fell in a certain way like that. And I was like, whoa, I was like, I need a, I have this vision for a little mini sculpture. So I got started on it right away, worked all night and was able to present it at market. So I guess more or less, I just, uh, I just like to surprise everybody just as much as I like to surprise myself. That is a great answer. Um, <laughs> so I don't see any more questions in the chat, so I will just keep asking my own questions. <laughs> um, okay. um, one thing, I mean, we all just experienced a fantastic um, Indian market weekend that I think has a lot of us wondering where um, 
The world of native art and native jewelry is moving as a result of the past year and a half in the pandemic. Do you have any thoughts on where you see your field moving? Well, when the pandemic took over, I was really um, bummed out because that was the first year I got accepted into the Swai Indian market. <laughs> I was like so happy. I mean, I had my own booth. I'm pretty sure I was in a great spot. And then COVID took over. I was like, no, I was, oh, I was so upset. I was bummed. But uh, little did I know that they were going to do something with it. Um, they made it virtual. So it pushed all of us artists to, you know, make our own website and design it however we want it to. So that really pushed me because we all had to work harder than we usually do. We had to start taking our own photos, start posting, measuring, you know, everything, the whole process, rather than just being at a live show and having everybody try on, you know, ask questions, you're there, you know, give them the full experience. But with the pandemic and all that, I really took advantage of it with the lockdown and um, just got to work. I was helped me become more consistent, patient, more disciplined in what I wanted to do. Start focusing more on myself than the social media. I took a break from all that. I um, it just really wore me out. You know, um, I'm working with a flame <laughs> all day, burning my eyes. You know, underneath a bright light. Um, by the way, I got to show you guys my work table. Yeah, that's how it works. Awesome. And my Dremel there. Whatever. But yeah, I work out. I work out of um, <clears throat> a piano warehouse. So I'm surrounded by tons of creative people and amazing people. So. So yeah, this is um very thankful for covid i mean not i mean not for um all the all the horrible you know like passing you know i have a lot of family pass away from covid so i mean that's why it really helped push me you know to make my family proud i knew um they would have loved to see how far i've come and you know i always think of them so it's it's just uh, looking at COVID was an advantage, but at the same time going through so much, you know, the grieving and just all the emotional stuff, I had to keep my mind busy. I had to, yeah, just with everything. So I, my jewelry really helped me um, excel with my emotions and how I was feeling when, when that time happened. And, so I just wanted to show the world. I wanted to prove myself like, wow, I, you know, I want to make my family proud. <laughs> and uh, we're all going through a tough time. I want to see if I can put a smile on everybody's face. You know, I want to make myself happy too. And so I just want to, you know, help everybody be a positive impact. And that's really what I'm still trying to do to this day, you know, be an inspiration to youth, elders, everybody of all ages. And yeah, have them commit to something they love full time and challenge them. So it's it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. And you're doing a fantastic job. Um, this conversation has been so inspiring to me and I'm sure to everybody else who's watching. Um, we are pretty much out of time unless there's anything else that you want to talk with Mayak audiences about. Um, okay, well, I like to thank all of you for tuning in and um, listening to my story. I wish you know I could have said a lot more about my life. I knew we were on a time limit, so I just kind of try to spit out as much as I could and speak about, you know, but I'm just <clears throat> thankful for all of you for all the continuous love and support. I'm gonna keep going and going and going. I'm not giving up. Um, like I said, I just so busy, you know, and everything. And I'm just amazed and thankful for all the business. And we're doing it, guys. We're doing it. I mean, you guys remember me my first year, and a lot of you remember me from who I used to be. And I mean, to see me now, I hope you all, you know, can notice and understand that, you know, I'm trying to be a positive influence to everybody. And 
I just want to change the world, you know, step by step, day by day. I want to hopefully go back home to my Pueblo and give back, you know, maybe a co-op or a foundation, or maybe I can have a fellowship of my own one day. But I definitely want to be able to give opportunity how I've been given opportunity and show my thanks and give, you know, blessings because it's tough being an upcoming artist with not a lot of people noticing, but if you can show your passion and show them that you're truly genuine and true to yourself, true to your people, you know, people are willing to support you and give you all the support you need. And I mean, I'm really trying to pave my way to the next level. And I mean, I, like I said, lots of amazing people back home, not enough opportunity. So it leads everybody to make mistakes that they don't want to, but you know, it's survival of the fittest. Everybody got to do what they got to do. And I understand that. So you can't judge anybody by mistakes. And that's how I am. I don't judge nobody. I've been there. I've done that. So I'm just here for anybody, you know, looking to reach out or anybody looking to take the next step. Um, I'm here. Uh, feel free to reach out and, you know, let me know. I mean, even just to talk, you know, I'm always here for anybody. So it's, I may be busy, but you know, it's right now I'm starting to catch up a little bit more and just trying to stay consistent. You know, I've been going through a lot, so I'm trying to keep the momentum flowing and yeah, I'm exhausted. It's, um, it was a long weekend, <laughs> but I'm very thankful, thankful for the world, thankful for all of you who stopped by to visit me and thankful for all of you keeping in touch with me, emails, um, giving me blessings for a successful show. They worked. Um, I, yeah, thank you. I love all of you. <laughs> One love. One love. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Um, we'll have to have you back um, to go more into your story. And I really appreciate you taking the time to chat. I know having a program the week after market is a lot to ask. So I appreciate everybody tuning in and to you, Abe, for all that you do and for this wonderful conversation. Um, and like I mentioned at the beginning of the program, a recording of this will be available on our YouTube page in the coming weeks. So please keep an eye out on our social media for that. And um, thank you all.